Hey, what up, y'all? Uh, we got another winner of the hundred dollars today. Boom! She just popped up right here. If you want to be another winner, because I got three more hundred dollar bill to get out. All right. So if you want to be another winner, go ahead and share this post. All right. This whatever video you about to watch, share this video on your Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and I'm gonna pick a random winner. See you soon. Enjoy the video. What is up, y'all? This preacher Lawson in the building. I'm here. What's up, y'all? Uh, welcome back to another episode of I Don't Have This as an episode. So welcome. Um, I'm so excited right now. I got me a I got me a moon. I don't even know what it's called. A moon pod. That's what I got. I got a moon pod and I'm hype about it. And I just I just sat in it and I'm like, man, this was a waste of money. It was so dumb. It was not it wasn't a waste of money because it's cool. It's just something I seen on Instagram and I was like I was like, oh, this is something I can waste my money on. And then I was right. <laughs> I did it! Alright, nobody looks sexy crying. Facts, bruh. When you're sad and you're crying, just remember, you're ugly. So cheer up and don't look ugly. <laughs> so we're gonna react to some videos. Uh, I think I'm gonna react to uh, my America's Got Talent performance. At, excuse me, my Britain's Got Talent performance. Yeah. Because your boy, I mean, first off, if you know me, you know, like, 90% of my fans know me from America's Got Talent. That's where I got my start. Most people know me from America's Got Talent. Uh, most people just know me, uh, or, you know what, I want to know where you know me from. I mean, if you don't know me from America's Got Talent, I want to know what other place you know me from. Because most people know me from America's Got Talent. But I did some other stuff, like Britain's Got Talent, uh, World's Most Amazing Dog, Black Lady Sketch Show. I did like some morning shows. I was on a couple of YouTube channels. I ain't trying to brag. First time outside of America, and he says he's really excited about visiting London. Oh yeah, Buckingham Palace, Super excited. Cape Ben, and the Tower of London are just three of the places he's been able to Google while he's been sat in a windowless dressing room here in Wembley eating crisps. He calls them potato chips. That's funny. It's I was stuck. Wilson. I did call shit. Hey, that's but so cool. Look at that city. I'm years old. I'm from the United States of 29 America. now. And I'm a stand-up comedian. I make you laugh. Ha! Starting out in uh, comedy was rough because <laughs> a lot of places you go, the audience members that are there, they just kind of eat the sandwich and you start cracking jokes. They're like, what? I mean, it was True. like eight years in before I started making money. And yeah, that's because of America's guy. Can I say this? I just want to say this trip to London was the greatest time of my life. I mean, it was the, like the greatest. I was there for, I don't know, like three weeks. It was the greatest time of my life. I've never had, I, I, I was happy there. I was sad. I was excited. You know what I mean? I've had every emotion oh, when I was over there in England. I fell in love. You know what I mean? I just, it was just. I had every emotion. It was so cool. I got to perform from the most people I've ever performed in front of. I freaking had a stadium. It was just so many things. I actually documented it and uh, I made a vlog out of it. I just never put the vlog out because it was just so much to do. But maybe I'll put the vlog out sometime. I don't know, we'll see. I was on America's Got Talent season 12. I don't feel safe driving with my grandma because she's really spiritual. She got that attitude like, if I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven, so it don't matter. It do matter because I'm in the car. I'm in the car, okay? <laughs> I think you are unbelievably talented. This could be your time. I lost to a 12-year-old ventriloquist Man. that didn't open her mouth all the time. Darcy Lay! Simon said, I could do it. I think this is the... You better not be here. I don't want to meet any... Darcy, since being on America's Got Talent, <laughs> got me a little bit sure of money. small. Uh, because of that money, I do have new friends and family members that I didn't, I didn't really know of. Uh, but yeah, it changed my life. I never thought it would have mounted this. First time in London, I'm so pumped. I'm excited to try the tea. I don't even know what that's about. I'm going to go to the pub. I don't even drink like that. I'm about to get drunk. Uh, you know what else I'm about beer to is nasty, but wine. Okay, who like wine? Your boy. I think I like it. Am I nervous? <laughs> Yes. Do I want to get to the finals? I wasn't there. What do you mean finals? I'm trying to. What you think I'm here for, girl? I'm trying to win. What is that? Win right there? Mmm. Get over here, winner. Don't win it. Get over here, winner. Look at all the vegans. You're not supposed to be fishing. You know you don't fish, preacher. We're vegans. Oh, it's my song. I said it yellow down the drain. It's going down, baby. Yellow down the drain. Feed all in. I know you do it. Yeah. 
Look how many people that is. That was insane. Right, man. Let's get this out the way. Obviously, I was ready. I'm from Brixton. <laughs> so that's what black a lot of black people are there. That's why it was funny. I just asked someone. I was like, "Where are the black people at?" <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I, I remember asking around, "Where are the black people at?" And then they were like, "I guess you could say Brixton, because there are black people everywhere. Like it's kind of diverse. I mean, it's mostly white people, because that's just you know." Earth, but it was. I, I was asking. I was like, "Where's where's most where's most of the black people concentrated in? Where's what location?" And that I, they told me Brixton, and I said it, and it worked. This next one didn't work. We dumb, but uh, no, I'm joking. I'm from America, y'all. What's up? <laughs> yeah, apparently Englanders think we're dumb, <laughs> and you're right. We dumb, but uh, we got dentists. Okay, you can't have everything, all right? <laughs> Oh, it did work. I'm feeling good. It's hard life. to tell sometimes <laughs> when it's that many people. Coffee. I normally don't drink coffee. So when I did, I was surprised. And I felt so energetic. I was like, man, I feel so energetic. I feel so energized and alert. Why don't I drink more coffee? And then my booty was like, this is why. It snuck up on me. I was not ready. You ever accidentally start to salsa to the bathroom? You're like, where did I learn this? It was bad. <laughs> You ever go to the bathroom thinking you only gotta pee, and then when you get there, your body's like, nah, son, we got work to do. Work to do. I destroyed that bathroom. I couldn't breathe for 11 seconds. I lost brain cells. I was like, why is my arm in the toilet? It was so big. But I'm <laughs> Anyway, that joke did well. So I did that joke on like, I don't know, like a couple of different platforms. I did it on my, on my special, I did it on there. And I filmed my special before I came here. It was just, it was just funny because I'll get some comments and be like, you did that joke already. And then you're doing it again. And like, let me explain to you how jokes work, all right? You think something's funny and then you say it on stage and it may work, may not work, all right? And if it, depending on how well it does, you keep chopping, you keep chopping this part out, putting this part in, taking parts out, putting it in, and then it gets better and better and better, and then it's one of your top materials, and then you use it on TV, and then you stop using it. Well, I used it on my special, but my special wasn't out at the time, and I, so I decided to do well on this show. So I took, I took a joke I knew was going to do well, and I did that. That's how it works, bro. Ask me again. Say I did that joke again, again. Say I did the joke again, again. I slapped somebody. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all had that experience. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Can we check out them guns for a second? Can we just? Oh, can we just? Who's seen that? Who's seen America's Got Talent? Who's seen me on America's? Have you seen me? Have you seen me? Okay. Who voted for me though? Who? Of course you did, London. I lost to a 12-year-old ventriloquist. She didn't open her mouth the whole time. The whole time. You never know what it feels like losing a million dollars to somebody that still has chores. You'll never know. Also, I did that joke. I did that joke on another America's Got Talent forum where I slapped the microphone. Except they cut the microphone because I guess they thought it was violent or something. So they cut me smacking the microphone. Which was so annoying because I was like, that's the whole point of me having the microphone up there, guys. And then they cut it or whatever. And then people were like, you did that joke before. And I'm like, listen, Brett, this is a different country. All right? This is a different country. It just happens to be on YouTube so you can see it on YouTube. But this is a... Shut your... Ah, come through this... Ooh, you don't want it, though. I'm a grown man. What am I going to do? Hey, Darcy, how was school? Like, no, man. <laughs> Plus, she beat me, so I hate her. Why would I talk to someone I hate? I don't hate her. She's cool. Don't hate Darcy. She's an angel. So is the devil. Okay? Now, I'm not. <laughs> She's not the devil. I love her and her family. The greats. I don't feel like I lost on this show for a couple reasons. First reason I don't feel like I lost on the show is because I was homeless three and a half years this ago. This is so I'm crazy. I'm far from that now. All right? I'll never be homeless again. In my life. That's right. Never gonna be homeless again. Never. Thank you. And I was. That's right. That's right. I got money now. I got way more friends and family members than I remember. Um, Facts. Tyra Banks. If you don't know who Tyra Banks is, seriously, welcome to Earth. People would tell him. The people would tell me 
not to do that joke, there's like no one knows. You know, they're both like hosts on major shows and they're both supermodels, so they're the same people. <laughs> and on the show, she licked my face, okay? I could die tonight, you don't understand. She licked my face, y'all. <laughs> she did lick my face, it was great. I licked her hand first though, I licked her hand first. All right, what happened was, she was interviewing me and I was like, I can't believe I'm talking to you, Tyra Banks. And she was like, yeah, it's me. And she put her hand out. And she was like, you can pinch my hand and see if I'm real. Matter of fact, you can kiss it. And I was like, kiss it. <laughs> I didn't realize my tongue was that long, man. I almost licked the floor. She started laughing. I was like, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to jail. <laughs> Bro, when she laughed, I was like, Oh. She was like, go get him, Tiger. I laughed. I was like, funny you call me a tiger because I'm feeling great. Like the cereal because in America, don't worry about it. Anyway, so I went on stage. And you know how the judges on these shows, they always ask you all these random questions like, hey, preacher, what's your favorite color? You got a favorite color? Huh? You got a girl? Man, what's your girl? <laughs> and at the time, I had a girlfriend. So I was like, yeah, I got. I cracked me up. I had to laugh first before I said to y'all. The Tyra, all right? I walk off and she's mad. She was like, why would you let me lick your face on national television, preacher? You got a girlfriend. And I replied, I'll let you lick my face, Tyra, because you're Tyra Banks, okay? Why would I not let Tyra Banks lick my face? If my girl had a chance for Aunt and Death to lick her face and she turned it down, I'm dumping her because I don't want to date anybody that stupid. Are you serious? If I had a chance for Aunt and Death to lick my face, I am dressing up like an ice cream cone. You don't understand. They about to get all this. My name is Preacher Lawson. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love you. It, it originally was for Drake, and then they came on the show. And I remember telling the producers, hey, tell Ant and Dick I was joking. Because if they come up and try to lick my face afterwards, I don't want to, I don't want them to lick my face. <laughs> and he licked my face. I was salty too, man. So stupid. So extra, bruh. I couldn't hang out with me, man. I could not hang, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be around me for a little bit and then it's like, yo, calm your energy down. Hey, thank you, man. Uh, Amanda. Oh, oh, do you know what? I am so excited for you. You had me at, that's my arm in the toilet. I, I, <laughs> I loved her I reaction. Thought, I love this man. It was like bang, bang, bang. Every single thing hit on point. You got loads of laughs. I mean, yeah, that was great. The UK. That's my people right there. Somehow, I don't really know all of them, but I know John Emanuel. She said I can win. So excited about you. I mean, she said I can win. I got hyped. We have seen you audition. You've got this really naughty, naughty side about you. And, and you look great, you, by the way, Simon. It's the show called Champions. You're a champion because you come all the way here. You're competing with the best in the world. In my opinion, this is one of the best acts we've seen throughout the whole series of this. Wow. That was a cool feeling right there, man. By the way, David isn't happy when other comedians do well, so accept that. Um, it, it's not true. I, it is know, true. When I, was a, when I was a teenager, the most exciting comedian in the world was Eddie Murphy, and I remember seeing Raw and Delirious, his stand-up shows, and I just thought, you know what, there's never going to be a comedian as outrageous, as funny, as sexy, as him, but I think it's you. <laughs> anyway, there I go. So that was my reaction to my first Britain Got Town performance. It was incredible. Performing in front of that many people in a different audience, they laugh differently. It's really hard to, I mean, I don't think people realize how hard it is. I mean, I'm sure you're thinking, you know, all those people that it's like, it's hard to bomb, but it's, it's like, you have to wait, you have to do the joke and they have to laugh. You have to wait till the laugh like hits the back of the room and come. You have to time yourself differently. 
as opposed to if I was in like a comedy club with 200 people, I could just go bang, 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 and then I'm like, I gotta slow it down. Gotta slow that thing down. But yeah, that was what I, that was my reaction. I hope you enjoyed, had a lot of fun. I mean, that was like one of the greatest times of my life. Yeah, I was like, I was, I was ready to go home though. I mean, it was a great vacation, but I think it was because I was, this is my first time ever being outside of the country and I let myself go. I was like, you know what, bro? Uh, this thing, you, you're never gonna have a first time outside the country experience, so have fun. But thanks again for watching, I appreciate it. Um, go ahead, subscribe. If you have not already subscribed, turn the notification bell on, so dang a lang bang, you hear me coming. Go ahead, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, all of that. And I'm out.